YouTube. Okay, welcome to the third video, to the third video in our series on how to make Warren Miller's sleeping bag. And uh, in this one, yeah, we're going to get right to it. Uh, it may be a little longer than the first two because I'm not sure where I might be able to break it if it runs a little too long. Let me apologize for that. But let me get right into it. Part one was about Warren Miller. Part two was about how we came about deciding what the design looked like. What we're going to do right now is tell you about the fabric and how to put it together. Hopefully we got a long time to do it, or enough time. Okay, the fabric. Real easy. Warren Miller says to use sateen, and that's a good choice. Sateen is moderately water resistant moderately breathable. It's a good outdoor fabric. So good that the Army used it in field jackets when I was in the Army. The best damn garment ever made is a model 1965 field jacket. We won't get into that. Now, as far as the, the design is concerned, the fabrics of the early 20th century were sold in narrow widths. Narrow, narrow rolls, ranging from about 28 inches to about 36 inches, okay? And this is why in the boys' book, Warren Miller says use 28-inch material for the boys' sleeping bag. I believe that he probably used 32-inch wide material uh, because the bag ends up being 30 inches wide. Okay, once you subtract out for, the, for the, the hems and seams and folds and all that kind of good stuff, if you use 32-inch wide fabric, you'll end up with a 30-inch wide bag. Now, fabric today is not sold in those narrow widths, usually. Usually they're 5 foot wide or 6 foot wide. So we have to adapt our method of construction to that, to those 2023 realities. You might be able to go out and buy yard goods in the color that you prefer. Miller specified that he made his bag out of a brown sateen, and I wanted to copy that. I couldn't find any rolled goods, any yard goods uh, in sateen in the brown color. I ended up buying a king-sized uh, set of bed sheets, cotton sateen bed sheets okay it's the right weave it's the right thread count and for me it's the right color now i bought the king size set because i hadn't quite figured out exactly how i was going to cut the fabric and i wanted to make sure i had enough and this gave me one top sheet one fitted sheet and two pillowcases i'll end up with two nice big stuff sacks and I only needed the top sheet to make the sleeping bag. So I've got enough fabric to make a whole bunch of stuff sacks with the scrap. Okay, we'll show you how to cut this in just a few minutes. Okay, now for the insulation, Miller talks about buying Australian wool bats and laying them, shingling them. And what that means is he laid them one on top of the other down the length of the bag. Says he used five bats. Okay, there's more math involved here. Because what Miller is trying to do is double up the thickness of the, of the bats. We have absolutely no way to know the dimensions of those bats. They were, I guess, rectangular. They could have been square. We don't know how thick the material it was. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some modern equivalent. It's not going to be seen, 
The outside of the bag is going to look like Warren Miller's sleeping bag. The inside of the bag will keep us warm when we use it during the spring and summer months. Okay? I found a wool and cotton blend batting. Okay? Wool batting is very uh, expensive if you use 100% wool. Cotton batting isn't good enough to do the job. This was the right price and it will do the job. Okay? Let me show you something about this particular batting and why you should be getting looking for batting with scrim. Okay, here's that insulation uh, out of the bag and I'll get up here and see if you can see it. What the scrim does is it holds this sheet of batting together. Okay? while you're sewing it and it keeps it kind of flat so that when you run your sewing machine over it this doesn't get all tangled up in the foot okay I bought a twin size set because I knew that the finished dimensions of this were going to be about uh, 32 inches wide by 90 inches long so uh, I bought a twin size set I can get uh, two two bats out of this, single bats. They're not very thick, but it's enough to keep you warm at night. It's about the equivalent of a good wool blanket. Okay, if you want something a little more insulative, a little warmer, get two of these. Okay, and use two thicknesses. You can use as many thicknesses of batting as you want to make this sleeping bag. Okay, so there we go. We've got a cotton wool blend for our insulation, and we've got cotton sateen bed sheets for our inner and outer shell. Now, let me show you how to cut this stuff, and then we'll get into sewing. Okay, here we have two pieces of paper that represent this first one is the insulation that we're going to use. 72 inches wide by 90 inches long. We're going to set that aside for a minute and we're going to look at this piece of paper which represents our king size sheet. It is 108 inches long and 102 inches wide. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to do is fold it in half. Okay. So it is now 54 inches wide. And then we're going to measure down 90 inches. This edge up here will be what is the top of the sheet with that big wide uh, hem that is here. We want to get rid of that. So we're going to come down here 90 inches and then we're going to cut our sheet so that it's 90 inches long. And we're going to take this excess and set it aside, make a bunch of stuff sacks with it. Okay, so now it is 54 inches wide by 90 inches long. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over from the fold and we're going to measure over 32 inches and we're going to put a mark and we're going to come over from the fold and we're going to measure 22 inches and we're going to make a mark and then we're going to connect the two dots, the two marks we made with a line of chalk or something like that on our fabric and we're going to cut along that line and that's where the magic comes from. We now have two identical pieces for one of our quilts. And then we have another piece that is, uh, let me see if I can get this up here. There it is. Narrow at the bottom, wide at the top. Now, you can either cut this along this fold here, or you can leave it just the way it is. Okay. 
Now we'll take our insulation that is 72 inches wide and we're going to fold it in half. So now it's 36 inches wide by 90 inches long and we're going to lay our cloth panel on top of it and then we're going to make a mark down this diagonal line and we're going to take both pieces of fabric we're going to cut along that line this is your insulation we're going to cut along that line and then we will cut along the fold cut it a little bit better than I just did okay now we're going to take our two single pieces of cloth we're going to set one on top of the other and then we're going to set a piece of insulation on top of all that and then you'll clip all the way around. You can clip it or you can pin it all the way around. We're doing this to scale so we're using tiny clips. All the way around. So what you've got is one piece of cloth, another piece of cloth, one on top of the other and then your insulation which is going to sit on top probably should get the red book out of the way okay and then you're going to take it in the sewing machine and you're going to stitch it all the way around except for this area down here at the bottom stitch about two inches here and then go all the way down the side all the way across the top all the way down the tapered side and then about another inch going across this way okay so you're going to leave a hole right there between my, where my two fingers are and that's when you've got all of this stitched all the way around except for this hole you're going to reach inside grab it and pull it right side out and then and only then you will finish the stitch here don't worry about what it looks like because in the end it's going to be inside your sleeping bag now on this one here that's a single piece like I said you can either cut it down the fold and get two pieces out of it or you can leave it just as one single piece but you're going to do the same thing you're going to take your insulation you're going to put it on top you're going to clip or pin it all the way around and you're going to sew it from about an inch at this corner all down the long side all across the top down the tap tapered side another inch leave a hole reach in grab and pull it inside out you'll have two of those one made out of two pieces and one made out of the one piece just remember keep your two pieces of fabric together with the insulation on top Okay, uh, after folding and cutting the uh, insulation on this, I realized that it was probably going to be a bit too thin to use as a sleeping bag in the uh, early spring and late fall. Uh, what I did was I went out and bought another sheet of insulation. Okay, so now I'm going to take the insulation and rather than cutting it down that fold, I'm just going to have two pieces that are folded over 
and cut as a single sheet. You'll see that in the uh, uh, clip that follows, okay? Uh, your choice. You could, you could, like as I said, you can use as many layers of that insulation as you want. Or you can go out and get some uh, Primaloft or some kind of polyester. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to be seen, okay? All right, let's watch the old guy cut stuff. Okay, I've got my fabric all cut out. You can see this is one panel, the others are laying over here. And you can also see why you use your cloth in order to measure your insulation. The factory package for the insulation says it's 90 inches long. Well, I've cut this 90 inches long, and I've still got about 4 inches of insulation left over down there. What that means is if I had measured it at one end and then the other end, why then the bevel would be different and I'd have to go out and get new insulation. Now, since I'm using, uh, since I'm doubling up my insulation, I went out and bought another uh, piece of batting. I'm not going to cut it down the fold here. This batting is folded over. I'm just going to cut it down here and cut it to length, and then it will already be folded over. I'll pin this up and sew it. We'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so what we've got is, this is the folded piece of fabric, and this is a folded piece of insulation, and I'm just going to clip these together all the way around to sew. And when I do sew, like I was telling you before, I'm going to go about an inch or so, two inches here, and two inches here. I'm going to start here, go two inches, go up, come across, come down, and come back two inches. And then when that's all done, I'm going to reach up inside, I'm going to open up the two outsides, I'm going to reach in, grab it at the end, and pull it all out. Pull it right side out. Okay? See you in a minute. Okay, I'm about uh, two-thirds the way done sewing now, and I wanted to show you how to do the trick. Okay, what I've done is this piece has been sewn all the way around, with the exception of this open end. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in. I'm going to go all the way to the end. I'm going to grab hold of it, and I'm just going to pull it out. And when I'm done, Got my blanket. Okay, cloth on this side, cloth on that side, insulation in the middle. What I do next. As I lay it out all flat, pull out the corners, then I take a piece of wood, I lay it at a diagonal, take a piece of chalk, and score a line. Then I measure 10 inches 
away on both sides. Strike another line every 10 inches all the way down the length of the bag. And then I turn this 90 degrees to that, roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, and score lines every 10 inches all the way down. Okay. Now, what that does is it gives me the pattern to sew the quilting on the bag. This is what it should look like when it's done. Okay, you can see the diamond pattern. I'll bring it up a little closer so you can see it. Okay, so, now I've used a different color thread. You will probably use the same color thread. But you can see I've got my stitch in about every 10 inches. This will keep it quilted, uh, keep the uh, insulation from shifting. You also notice I'm not too worried about folds, okay? This is, there you are. This is a sleeping bag, not a Swiss watch. Don't worry about being exact. Worry about being warm, okay? Alrighty, now I'm gonna spend uh, the next hour or so sewing this up and then we'll come back and we'll finish the assembly of the bag. Okay? See you in a minute. Okay, here we are. We're done. One last thing before I do the trick one last time. I'll show you something that I always do. I do this at the uh, top of the bag where the sewing comes to an end and down here where the bag opens about 30 inches down from the top and you might be able to see that see that line of stitching right there okay what I did was is I went 90 degrees to the edge of the sleeping bag and just back stitched a couple of times back and forth it's going to be a high use area you're going to open your sleeping bag up and it'll catch up here at your at your shoulder and it'll catch down here where it's opening up so you just you're going to pull on it give it a little bit of extra strength okay all right let's make a sleeping bag out of this thing Here we go. Time to go Betty by. Get back with you in a minute. Okay then, there you go. We have a sleeping bag. We have a period correct sleeping bag. Something that we know was made by somebody in 1916 thereabouts. He wrote about it in 1919 and other people likely copied his design and made it in their own homes. Okay, so if you want an authentic looking sleeping bag for the early 20th century, follow these instructions. Now I will note, double check all of your dimensions, particularly at the top of the bag. Make sure that is wide. You can, uh, because of the length of this bag, you can be too narrow at the bottom and still be able to fit in the bag. But if you're too narrow at the shoulders, you're not going to be able to get into the bag. Uh, the other thing is use of this bag. Uh, if you make it the way that I have made it, using two layers of insulation, two layers of the cotton batting, uh, don't attempt to use it in temperatures below 40 degrees. And if you're going to be in an environment where you anticipate temperatures to go below 50, bring along a wool blanket with you to, to augment this. And of course, always use a water proof ground cover and some insulation beneath you. 
even as thin as this insulation is. Once you lay on it, you crush it, and it loses all of its insulative value. Okay, now at the end of this video is going to be a link to our uh, sewing series, uh, beginning sewing series for, you know, for beginners in case this is your first sewing project. I do recommend you try some of the more simpler projects that are involved in that, uh, in that sewing for beginners series. And uh, I'll, I'll throw in a link to another playlist that you might find interesting. Okay, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. When you do that, other people are able to find this who have the same kind of interest that you and I do. And we can continue to keep making these. Now, as far as this sleeping bag is concerned, uh, we're going to make some others. Okay, as time goes by, we're going to be making a few other sleeping bags. Uh, one we've got, of course, is the uh, uh, one on the What Price Glory Comforter. I did a uh, video on that. Might even link to that at the end of the video. And we're going to try to make a reproduction of a Jaeger bag and a Kenwood bag. But I don't have any schedule on that. I've got a bunch of stuff in my head that's going to come out and go into your eyes on the video. Okay? All right. We'll see you down the trail.